So today we're joined by uh, Father Hovsep Garapetian. And uh, Father Hovsep is uh, a PhD candidate in the School of Theology and Religious Studies at the Catholic University of America, majoring in church history. The topic of his dissertation will focus on the exegesis of Kelafilia Gnostica of Evangelus by the 13th century Armenian church father, Krikos Yersnatsi. He's a graduate of the seminary at the Armenian Patriarchate of Jerusalem and holds a Master of Div Divinity degree from St. Nersas and St. Vladimir Theological Seminaries in New York. Um, Father Garapetian is ordained is an ordained priest of the Armenian Church and serves in the Eastern Diocese of the uh, American Church in Ar Armenian Church in America as a pastor of St. Mary Armenian Church in Washington, D.C. So without further ado, uh, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Vartan, and good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy uh, that I have this opportunity today to present to you. Uh, before we go ahead, let us begin with the prayer. Avodkovsk saying, ha. Imastutun, Horisus, Turmezi Mastutun, as Varis for Hell, Yev Hosel, Yev Gorzel Arachikam and Anjam, Ichar Hortots, Ibanit, Evi Gorzos, Pergasmes, Yev Vohormia, Karazots, Yev Mes, Pasma Meratzes. Lord, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit among us and prosper all the works that we undertake. Amen. I understand uh, that uh, the format is that I, I'm going to present and then uh, at the end we'll have a uh, question and answer session. Is that correct, uh, Vartan? Is that how it is done usually or? Um, every presenter uh, did a little different, okay. some, some more discussion, it's uh, okay. however you so, would like. So, so I'll, I'll present, if there is anything uh, that you think it's unclear, you want to ask, please jump in. Uh, but I know that before me, there were, uh, I guess, six more people who presented. And uh, the, this year's topic is hope, Christ as our hope. Uh, and I'm sure that all of those presentations were uplifting. Uh, during these difficult times, we indeed need the hope of Christ. We need Christ to bring his hope to our hearts, to our lives, uh, with whatever happened in the past and whatever is happening now and whatever is going to happen in the future. Uh, so this is a very important topic and uh, probably many already have talked about hope from different perspectives, looking at it from different angles, from different point of view. So today, I would like to look at it from the point of view of prayer, you know, because prayer is the tool, is the uh, means by which we get in touch with Christ as our hope. Uh, so without prayer, without uh, sincerely praying or knowing how to pray, we would be not able to get that inspiration uh, and, and get that um, connection with our Creator, with our Lord, with our Savior. So prayer is important and this worked very well because uh, as a part of my studies I have been working on, the, on this very beautiful text uh, which has 153 chapters or verses and it's, a, it's an ancient text and this is what I'm going to talk about. Uh, so the, the author of this text is Evagrius, Evagrius of Pontus, and before we get to our translation and learning and uh, trying to uh, see what the text tells us and also translating to Grappar, I would like to give you a little bit background information about Evagrius and also uh, about this very interesting text that we have, this very interesting work, treaty. Uh, so uh, one of the fathers of the early church, one of the most famous important fathers of the uh, ancient church, early church is Evagrius Pontius. And actually Evagrius was canonized in the Armenian church and uh, admired from the fifth century on. He has uh, become so loved in, and respected in the Armenian church uh, and in, in, the, in the monastic tradition of the Armenian church that his name, was added to the list of the saints mentioned during the divine liturgy. So during the litanies of the deacons, among other saints, among other church fathers, we also remember the name of Evagrius of Pontus. Uh, 
because his philosophy and his theological works, they came under criticism and uh, was uh, prohibited after 553, after the Fifth Ecumenical Council, many of his works were destroyed uh, and um, in their original language in Greek. And they were only preserved in Syriac and Armenian translation. So if someone wants to study Evagrius, they have to know uh, either Syriac or Armenian because uh, the, uh, the Greek, the original works were destroyed. Only few have survived. Evagrius of Pontus, uh, of course, was a Greek speaking philosopher. He was a teacher, author. He is a Christian ascetic who flourished in the second half of the fourth century. According to his student and uh, earliest biographer, Claudius of Hellenopolis, he was born in 345 in Ibora. Ibora is a small town in Pontus near the river Iris uh, to the southern shore of the Black Sea. So it's right on the southern shore of the Black Sea, a small city. Uh, his family was evidently wealthy from what we read from his biographer, hagiographer. Uh, his family was held wealthy because his father was the core episcopos responsible to the Bishop of Sebastia. Uh, as a teenager and a young man, he knew uh, another very famous uh, great father of the church, Basil of Caesarea, and he probably also knew his family. His hagiographer, Claudius, uh, claims that he was ordained as a reader in the church by Basil, and as a deacon by Gregory of Nazianzus. Here we have another very important uh, church father who influenced um, Evagrius very much. Uh, but he also likely knew another ascetic and reformer, Ustidius of Sebastia, uh, who influenced Basil of Caesarea and the flourishing Armenian Christian uh, mission, including ancient missions, um, uh, right just to the east of Anatolia. As a young man, uh, Evagrius may have also been fellow student of John Chrysostom uh, in the school of Libanius uh, in Antioch, because in various writings, he displays rhetorical skills that he would have learned from uh, Libanius. Uh, as a student and friend of Gregory, he worked with him uh, in the months right before the Council of Constantinople. Uh, the council which took place in uh, 381 uh, and after Theodosius I, the emperor, appointed Gregory uh, as Nicene bishop there. Uh, but then Gregory retired to Asia Minor and Evagrius remained in Constantinople to serve the newly appointed Archbishop Nectarius. It was in uh, 383, however, that he left Constantinople to go to Jerusalem where he associated himself with ascetic and origin scholars and uh, translators, Rufinius of Caesarea and Melanie, uh, Melania the Elder. And following their encouragement, uh, Evagrius went to the monastic settlement in Nitria and Kelia, where he lived until his death in uh, 399. He was a student of Gregory of Nazianzus and was immersed early in the writings of Origen of Alexandria and Clement of Alexandria. Like them, he created a constant interpretation of scriptures based on the thoughts of Plato, Aristotle, and later Platonists uh, with the addition uh, of certain Stoic teachings uh, touching the, uh, on ethics. Uh, he wrote treaties, he trained monks and those who aspire to knowledge, gnosis, and contemplation, theoria, and union with the divine. So he was a very important, very um, uh, significant ch uh, church father, father of the early church. Uh, the works of Evagrius were translated uh, into Armenian uh, into, uh, from early uh, times, as early as the fifth century. Uh, so just imagine St. Mesrop and St. Sahak just created uh, the Armenian alphabet and trained their disciples. And here uh, the works of Evagrius are being translated. So they also found a great value in the works of Evagrius. Um, 
so at, uh, at least two of his works, so two of the works of Evagrius, Gnostic Theology and Practicos and Gnosticos, uh, are considered by scholars to be translated directly into Armenian from their original Greek. Uh, there probably have been other works of Evagrius translated uh, in the early centuries from their original Greek as well. However, they have not survived and they were later on, uh, most of them in the 11th, 12th, 13th century were retranslated into Armenian from Syria. One of the most well-known works of Agis, as I was saying in the beginning, is his chapters on prayer, which like some other works of Evagrius have reached us under the authorship of Nihilus of Ansira or Nihilus of uh, Sinai, as he is known in the Armenian church, Nevos Sineatsi. Um, there are only two ancient surviving manuscripts, one in Syriac, the other one is in Arabic that describe its authorship to Evagrius. However, in 1934, uh, a Jesuit father, Father Husser, um, uh, translated uh, and in very important article also uh, undoubtedly proved the belonging of this work to Evagrius. In his French translation, accompanied by an introduction, he pointed innumerable, innumerable links that exist, existed between the chapters and the rest of Evagrius's works uh, thus making the authorship of this work uh, in, in uh, disputable and uh, definitely Evagrian. The chapters uh, or uh, the work of Evagrius on prayer have um, received a wide circulation. Uh, it was preserved in Greek uh, in, in, in a complete or partial form. And, and in more than 120 manuscripts. So even today, when the scholars have to study this work, they have to look at all those 120 manuscripts uh, and they're all in Greek and they date from 9th century to 14th century. Evagris' chapters on prayer is uh, preceded by prologue. So right before he begins to teach about the prayer, uh, he, he writes a prologue, which is, uh, has survived in the letter form. It's like a letter to a certain person who evidently requested Evagrius to complete, to compose this work. The prologue is preserved in the very small number of manuscripts. It is not in the Armenian version. Uh, from prologue, it becomes obvious that the recipient of this work is most probably a monk who was influenced and very much informed uh, of the practices of Egyptian monasticism, who also was uh, acquainted uh, with Macarius the Great. Uh, the prologue indicates that he is someone educated, not a novice in the monastic way of life, but most likely the one who aspires to the highest of Gnostic life. Uh, some modern scholars, they identify him with Rufinius, who was in Jerusalem until um, 398-97. The prologue indicates that Evagrius arranged his work adapting the number 153, uh, the, uh, which corresponds to the number of the fish miraculously caught by Peter, uh, described in John chapter 21, verses uh, 11, verse 11, uh, and we read in this chapter, in, in this uh, one verse uh, where John tells us, so Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and he dragged the net ashore. And he was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Uh, so the 153 numbers or verses in the work of Evagrius on prayer comes exactly from the number of the fish that was caught by Peter. Uh, the ancient Armenian version, which was translated in the sixth century from Greek, uh, has also reached us under the name of Nihilus of Ansira. Uh, but Machitaris of Vienna, they edited it. Uh, it appears uh, with other works attributed to Nihilus in the appendix of uh, Vieta Patrum, uh, Var Karans, which is basically the life of the saints 
and it was published in uh, 1855. Um, we know uh, from the life of Evagrius uh, by his disciple Palladius uh, that after spending two years in Nitria, in Nitrian desert, Evagrius settled in Kelian desert, where he spent the last 14 years of his life from early 385 to uh, uh, 399. Um, there he, he, he most probably led a semi anchoretic life, lifestyle, uh, spending most of the week in solitary in the cell and uh, on Saturday evenings and Sunday mornings, he would return to the church for various services, including the Eucharistic liturgy called Great Synaxis. In the early monastic tradition, the daily life of monk consisted of working and praying. However, unlike his monk brethren, Evagris did not carry out uh, manual labor, uh, but his task was copying and composing manuscripts. In the early monastic tradition, prayer, we know that it took various forms, uh, ranging from the recitation of a fixed group of psalms uh, to a more spontaneous expressions of prayer. Uh, it was supplemented by reading and uh, pounding on, on, on scriptures. Uh, there were no canonical hours yet. Just imagine in the fourth, fifth century, they were not set canonical hours that we have today. But uh, of course, certain times of the day, such as sunrise, evening and midnight, uh, were naturally uh, preferred when a monk would rise and uh, recite along in his cell. And Evagrius very interestingly, interestingly attests to such a community life in his 26th letter to Melania, where he basically says, and there are, there are many monasteries in Egypt where a great number of houses are built uh, or cells are built for monks. Uh, and every brother, every monk goes into his own. They work with their hands and they pray and they gather for prayer and at the table that is for the meal. And trials are everywhere in Nitria. Ladius, uh, who was Evagris's disciple and uh, biographer, tells us that Evagris made 100 prayers a day. So this remarkable um, uh, revelation about uh, Evagrius indicates that Evagrius can be regarded not only as a stifled dialetian, not only as a defender of the orthodox faith against the her heretics uh, or a fine analyst of dogismo and passions, but also as a man of prayer. And the theme of prayer is present in all of the major works of Evagrius, with the exception of uh, Kafalaya Gnostica and two great letters where he uh, mainly addresses the subject of comp contemplation and knowledge. Just think about it. Uh, for a monk living in a cell, in a desert, in the middle of the desert, where there, there is nothing, just imagine being in the middle of the desert, uh, in the time of his temptation, in the time of his trials and, and uh, desperation, uh, what could have been more hope-giving, more encouraging, and more... Uh, strengthening than conversing with God, the creator, the giver of hope, the source of joy, the source of life. And prayer has been the most important weapon in the arsenal of a Christian believer, not only uh, of, the, of, of monks, but also regular believers. Uh, it, it has been the most important tool for us to dispel the snares of sin, to bring the ray of hope and the ray of life. And I believe that this is why uh, this work of Evagrius on prayer has been so popular and so well received in the Armenian, Greek, Syriac, and so many other traditions, because it teaches what is acceptable prayer to God and how should a Christian pray with the right attitude and correct way in order to receive the blessing of hope, blessing of courage, faith, and all the other virtues, God-given virtues in, in, in their lives. Uh, the writing of, of uh, the chapters on prayer 
certainly dates from the last period of Evagrius's literary activity, literary life. He uh, composed his work in the uh, systematic manner. So there is a um, there is basically a, a, a logical structure to the work, uh, but he also uh, he, he uses other resources. He explores uh, the form of kapvalayan or short sayings, uh, which we also see in his other works. So as I mentioned, the treaty, the work uh, on prayer has uh, 153 chapters. Um, here I have chosen a few of them uh, for us to read together in uh, Grappa. Uh, in a time of desperation and hopelessness, what can be more hope giving and encouraging than conversing with God, praying to him. And this is how Evagrius presents the meaning of true prayer in chapter three. Um, so he says, Arot hostien matats arastvats, art vorpezi inch karkavurutiam pardekal matats and arastvats. Zi zorasi i hokevorsen ar ararichen yu, yev hosagits ne mayerial arans mishtordi. So we um, usually, when I do translation from Grapar to English or to uh, modern Armenian, uh, I usually read the entire sentence and I usually read it a few times uh, because, you know, when you try to translate something without understanding the meaning of it, it's a little bit difficult, no matter how much um, grammar you know, it's always tough. So it's always helpful when you do a translation from Grappar uh, to, to read the sentence uh, one, two, three times. Uh, and then uh, it's also helpful for me to divide the sentence into parts. Uh, so we are lucky um, this work on prayer has been um, uh, edited by the Mechitarian fathers uh, in, 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 in 1855, uh, and they have also put the grammatical marks, you know, like periods and, uh, and commas and so on. So it's easy to look at this sentence and to divide it into parts. But just imagine, you know, when you look at the manuscript, when there is no uh, any, any mark, marks, uh, any, any commas or periods, it becomes very difficult. Uh, so we see that the first part of the sentence, so we, we should try to uh, translate this first part of the sentence. So we know that it means prayer, uh, uh, which is a noun found in the plural form uh, because it ends with curve. And then uh, which basically means conversation, uh, and notice also the plural, plural form of chosk. Uh, and then we have the word matats. Matats is uh, the word mitk, uh, which is uh, of mind or matats of intellect. Um, it is also in the plural form, mit, matats, uh, mitk. Uh, this is a very interesting word because Evagrius uses often uh, this word in his writings. And you'll see that in these few uh, verses that we are going to read, he uses the, the word meat many times. It actually um, comes uh, from the Greek word nous, uh, which our, our Armenian church fathers have translated meat, uh, which basically means uh, a, a higher, higher spiritual understanding of the things of God. So, uh, so. Uh, if we translate this first, so arastvats, and then we have arastvats, uh, which is uh, our uh, pronoun, uh, primar uh, primarily used with the uh, personal noun to show direction or to show belonging. Uh, and then we have astvats, God. So arastvats, uh, towards God or to God or with God. Uh, so we can basically translate this first part, prayer is the conversation of mind with God. And it's interesting, when I read this first sentence, it reminded me of Gregory of Narek, yes? He says that, uh, 
uh, which kind of uh, sounds very similar to what Evagius is saying. And actually, um, some of the scholars, they think that St. Gregory of Narek read Evagrius and he, in his uh, composing, in his lamentation, uh, used some of the thoughts and um, uh, that, that was, was expressed by Evagrius. Uh, so let us continue. Uh, art Vorpezi inch kar are they gal metatsen arastvats? So we know the word art. Art means now. Vorpezi um, inch kar kavurutiam. So vorpezi inch, we have to translate it together to make sense out of it. With which, with what? Kar uh, kavurutiam is uh, order. So we can say now with ka what kind of order? Uh, or with what, what kind of arrangement? Karkavolution can also mean arrangement or order. Parde, parde, uh, it means is necessary. Kal uh, to stand, kal um, to fix, to stand, to remain. Matatsan, uh, which is again the plural of meat, and it's a dative form of matats, uh, which uh, with a definite article at the end. So. Um, uh, we, we, we can uh, translate it the mind or for the mind. Are uh, astvats in front of or with God? So, and then we continue. Z, Zora, C, E, Hoke, Worsen, are each and you. Z Zorasi, I hoke worsen ar ararichen yur. So Z is that it will become stronger. Zorasi, it will become stronger. I hoke worsen in spiritual things ar ararichen yur toward his creator. Yev hosagits nama yev yal arans mishnorti and become dialogue partner. Hosagits, it's an interesting word, uh, compound word. Hos Yevgits, um, dialogue partner or conversation partner. Nama with him, Yerial, Arantz Mishnorti, with him without a mediator. So Mishnort uh, can also be a mediator or intercessor. But I think in this case, mediator would work better. Uh, so I think if I click here, you should see the translation here. So I should say that this text has no, the text, text has not been translated previously. So you are seeing it in the, in the, in the English translation for the first time from Armenian um, uh, writing, from Armenian manuscript. So, uh, so so basically, Evagris is saying prayer is the conversation of mind with God. Now, with what kind of order is necessary for the mind to stand in front of or with God that it will become stronger in spiritual things towards his creator and become a dialogue partner with him without a mediator? So I think Evagrius is asking a rhetorical question. If our prayers are conversationing with God, uh, what do we need to do? What kind of order is necessary there? What kind of arrangements need to be made so that our mind can stand before God, in front of God, uh, with God, so that it will become stronger in spiritual things and towards our creator, and it would become a dialogue partner with him. Uh, so it's an invitation to us to uh, concentrate, to fix our mind on God uh, and to take our prayer seriously. So next verse that I chose is um, verse 11. Um, and uh, Evagius says, I'm sorry, I just want to ask, is, uh, is everything clear? Am I making sense when I talk about this? Am I going too quick? Okay, just don't hesitate to interrupt me if 
uh, if you need to ask anything. Uh, so next sentence, Evagia says, Janatsir, Katsutanel, Zmitasko, Ijam, Avotitsan, Hul, Yev Hamad, Yev Ansah Menal, Hamenain, Arkatze, Zi and Tuneli, Ditsi. So Janatsir, the word Janatsir, it's the word jan, Janal. Um, so it's it's uh, it can be translated as make every effort, make effort. Junk uh, Gorzadrel we have in Armenian, junk Gorzadrel, uh, or or it can also be translated as strive. So strive. Gatsutanel. Um, again, Gatsutanel. Uh, can mean to keep or to fix as meat as co your mind. Here we go another use of meat. Ijam agotitzen. Ijam jam we know is time, uh, and then agotitzen is prayer. So during the time, and e uh, shows the duration. So during the time of prayer, hul yev hamad. We know these words. Yes, we use it. Uh, in the modern Armenian, to hul is deaf and hammer is dumb. So, Evagri is saying, like, do every effort, strive to keep, to fix your mind during the time of prayer, hul yev hammer, deaf and dumb. Uh, and then he continues saying, yev ansah mana hamenain argadze. Uh, ansah is uh, unaffected. Uh, it comes from the word sahel, uh, which means to sleep. You know, uh, you, you stand on the ice and you sleep. Uh, so ansa, without affected, without sleeping, slippery, uh, sleeping. Uh, menal, to remain. Hamenain argadze. Argadze is uh, misfortune, accident. So from every, in every misfortune, we can translate it that way. Zi and Tuneli Litsi. So uh, it uh, becomes acceptable and Tuneli Litsi, it meaning the prayer. So if we look at the translation and see if we can make any sense of it, uh, make an effort to fix your mind during the time of prayer as if deaf and dumb. Sometimes we have to supply some little words so that the sentence makes sense. And again, this is a preliminary translation. It's a rough translation. Uh, so uh, it can be a little bit uh, worked on uh, later on. And to remain unaffected in every uh, misfortune. So it becomes, that is the prayer. Your prayer becomes acceptable to God. Uh, so. Uh, I think this is also a great advice to us, you know, during our prayers, how many times our mind wanders, you know, when we are at the church or even uh, if we are praying uh, on our own, uh, you know, our mind goes everywhere and it's never deaf and dumb uh, and only concentrating and fixed on God, uh, but it's always fixed on so many other things. So Evagris invites us and gives us an advice, you know, when you pray, just close the eyes and the minds and the, the ears of, of your uh, mind and just concentrate, fix it to God uh, so that your, your prayer will be acceptable to God. It will become acceptable to God. Uh, <clears throat> let us move forward. I think we have time. Uh, so 13. Evagri says, Zor inch aras says, ar i vresh chantrutsyun yechporen, vor zerkyatsen skes, hamenain hoj bari linikes, ijam avotitsen. Again, a great advice, piece of advice to, to us. He says, for jam, uh, or um, Zor inch aras says, so uh, whatever you would make, whatever you would do, um, we know the, 
Vresh Kantrutyun is revenge. Uh, so whatever you would do in revenge, Yech Biden, Yech Boren, to your brother, Zor uh, Zergyas in this case, who deprived you. Zergel is to deprive Zergyas in this case. So um, he's basic, basically saying whatever revenge you would make against the brother who deprived you, Amenain Hoj Bari Linikes Ijama So this all will not be anything good to you in the time of prayer, Hamenain. So uh, there will not be anything, anything good, Hoj Bari Linikes be to you during the time or in the time of prayer. So whatever revenge you would make against the brother who deprived you, there will not be anything good to you in the time of prayer. And actually another very interesting thing about reading Evagrius, any, any work of Evagrius, uh, is that it's very Bible-based. He does not repeat the Gospels or the Bible uh, or the scripture word by word, but we can always feel and see uh, connection, you know. Uh, so this verse, for example, it reminds me of, uh, you know, when you make a sacrifice to the altar, if you remember that you have anger uh, or revenge against your brother, just uh, leave everything and go and make up and then come back. So uh, I think it's it, it has like a, a resemblance to that verse. Um, so, so let us move to verse 14. Ahotken Hezutian, Yev Ambargutian, Yev Anhisha Charutian, Yev Siro Bahuman. So, Ahotken, so we have the verb N, so Ahotk, Ahotk again is prayer and is, uh, or we can also even say prayers are. But I, keep, I think for, the, for keeping it consistent, um, uh, probably would be better to say prayer is Hezutian, Yev Ambar Gutian, Yev Anhisha Charutian, Yev Siro Bahuman. So sometimes when you translate from Armenian to English, uh, you can change the sequence of the words. Or in this case, for example, you have to bring the last word, Bahuman, from the end of the sentence to the beginning in order to make a better sense of the of this sentence so you would say ahotken bakhuman going back which is um, a gushing forth or a source uh, so we can say prayer is a gushing forth or prayer is a source hezutian which is hezutun you know hez is meek so hezutun is meekness yev ambar gutian ambar gutian is uh, basically lack of anger on Yev Barganal, Chabarganal, on Bargutun, lack of anger. Yev on Hisha Charutian, again, a beautiful uh, word on Hisha Charutian, which basically means forgiveness on uh, uh, negative uh, suffix, suffix uh, Hisha Char, Hishel. Uh, so it has basically three different uh, parts in this word. So an hisha charutian, hishel yev charutian. So an hisha charutian. So basically, for forgiveness, uh, uh, for for forgiving someone the evil that they committed. So basically, uh, we can translate this word uh, literally that way. Yev uh, siro, and we know the word sel is love. Uh, so if we click here, we should have the translation of this verse. A prayer is a gushing forth or the source of meekness and lack of anger and forgiveness, not remembering evil, and of love. Uh, again, a great, great reminder to us, you know, uh, you cannot pray without not forgiving other, without um, you know, being angry at someone. So prayer is all, all the negative of that. So opposite of that. So let us move to uh, verse 15. Ahotken chandutian, yev chandutian, 
եւ գոհության ար իլավագույնը լավագույնսն սո ագեն աղոտք են prayer is խնդության խնդություն is joy սո of joy եւ խաղաղության and of peace եւ գոհության գոհություն is thanksgiving thankfulness so and of thankfulness ար լավագույնսն Uh, I think the best translation that I could come for this word lavaguisan is for better things. Uh, so if you click here, we should have prayer is again we have to supply uh, some words because from the previous ver- uh, ver- verse uh, he's talking about being a source of gushing for of prayer. So it's a source of joy and peace and thankfulness. for better things verse 16 aghotken tertmutsyan yev tarak usanats yev vshtats hrajaradegh yev tpopan so aghotken so prayer is or prayers are um, again we have i think here to bring the last two words Rajaradegh yev spopank to the beginning of the sentence. So and put it right uh, after aghotk uh, in in our English translation. So aghotken rajaradegh medicine rajaradegh rajarvel yev degh arerenguga. So it comes from two words. It's a compound word. Rajarvel yev degh rajarai rajaril is to renounce and so medicine of renunciation. Uh, And the spopank is uh, to spopel is to balm, um, to ease the pain. Uh, so we can say ahotken. Uh, so prayer is a medicine of renunciation and balm. And then we can continue. Tertmutyun, tertmutyun is sadness. So for sadness, yev taragusanats, taragusank, taragusil. Uh, we use this word in in modern armenian too also which basically means to doubt uh, doubtfulness um, and we have the word vrstats wished which is affliction or or grief so the translation would be prayer is a medicine of renunciation and balm for sadness doubt and affliction or grief Uh, so again, a, a great attributes of the prayer that Evagrius uses uh, reminds us about. And in the time of our hopelessness, in the time of our grief, this is exactly what we need. We need the prayer. We need the connection with God. And then we have verse seventeen. Let us do two more verses, and then we can stop, and we can uh, we can ask uh, questions if you have any questions. or comments so yertial vajarya zinchesko yev dur akhkadats yev aryal skhachen uratsir zanzen yev zashkharas vorbezi karasces an zbagapes kal hagotes so again it's a it's a command to us uh, evagris is telling what we need to do yertial Go, je kena yertal vajarya. So go sell. Zinchesko, uh, your things, uh, whatever belongs to you. Zinch, inch, inchker, uh, things that we have, uh, material, of course. Yev dur akhkadats, dur akhkadats. Give to the uh, poor. Yev uh, aryal and. Uh, basically take uh, ar arnel aryal yev aryal skhachen take the cross uratsir uranal is to uh, deny to uh, deny zanzen uratsir zanzen so deny the self yev zashkharas not only yourself but also the world uh, why so that uh, Vor bezi so that zik aras ces anes vagapes kalagotkes so that you can 
uh, you will be able, Kara says, you will be able uh, on the Zbara base without destruction, uh, Kal stand uh, Harutas in prayer. So he's telling us, uh, uh, again, uh, th this, this is very Bible-based, you know, it's in the Gospels many times. Jesus tells us, you know, go uh, to the uh, to the, the rich young man, you know, who came with the question to Christ. He says, go sell your things and in order to be able to follow me. Uh, and, uh, and then in another place, he says, take your cross and deny yourself and follow me. Uh, so Evagrius takes these beautiful sayings of our Lord, teachings of our Lord, and he, he applies it to the prayer. Uh, and he says, you know, do all these things, go sell your things uh, and give it to the poor and then take your cross and follow me and deny yourself, deny the world. Why? So that you can, without distraction, stand in prayer. Uh, so all these things, you know, they disturb us. Uh, they uh, make us think uh, or make our mind concentrated on the wrong things. Um, the life, uh, the, 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 the things that we have in our life. Um, and, and so Evagrius kind of reminds us that this is exactly what we need. We need just to concentrate on, on our Lord during our prayer. Um, so go sell what is yours, um, Zinchesko, uh, and give to the poor. Give to uh, And take the cross, deny the self and the world so that you will be able to stand in prayer without distraction. I think we have time for one more. So let, let us do the 18. Uh, Karelov Havagas Avotitsen Imastasidyas Dugabes. So you take Amestis if you wish, uh, if you if you desire, Yete Kamestis, Govapes Avotel. what is Govapes? Govapes is praiseworthy, praise praiseworthy, yes, go govapes praiseworthy a hotel. Uh, so if you wish to pray in a praiseworthy way, uh, basically, this is what he's saying. Uh, so always, always deny yourself. Bazum is many, yes, um, numerous. Bazum uh, is basically difficulties uh, so basically um, carrying many difficulties uh, we can translate it for the sake of prayer um, for the prayer for the sake of prayer philosophize truly uh, so can be translated if you wish to pray in the price uh, price uh, praiseworthy way deny yourself always and uh, carrying many difficulties for the sake of prayer philosophize uh, truly i think i'll stop here and i'll take some questions um, or any comments any anything that you would like to share uh, any thoughts that came to your mind while we're doing this translation um, or any questions, please. Derhad, has anybody compared the, Syri if, if this only exists in Syriac and Armenian, have people compared the Syriac and Armenian translations to see if, you know, there's differences? Because that's what we talked about with regard to something else, I guess, last class or the previous one. Yes, actually, this is one of the unique works of Evagrius that survived in Greek. So oh, okay. th this one survived in Greek. So we can compare in Greek, and that's what I'm cur currently doing with Professor Darling Young from Catholic University. We are basically translating this from Armenian uh, into English and also 
we are comparing it uh, with doing, we have the Greek text as well. Uh, so it's very similar to Greek. When you compare it to Greek, it's very similar, but uh, it's interesting that the Armenian manuscript, the, the most ancient surviving manuscript is from the sixth century. And the Greek most ancient surviving manuscript is from the ninth century. So Armenian is more, is older, is more ancient than the Greek. Uh, so that makes this text uh, in, the, in its Armenian form very valuable, you know. Um, So I have a question. Um, in the beginning, when you were in your introduction, you said that his works were burned. Was he anathematized at one of the councils? And, and if he was, why? Yes, in the fifth ecumenical council, he was anathematized uh, by the Byzantine church. We know that the, we, we have only three in the Armenian church. We have three ecumenical council. But um, so in the fifth ecumenical council, <coughs> Armenians did not participate in that council. Uh, Evagrius, uh, along with Timius the, the Blind uh, and Origen also, uh, they were anathematized because of their radical thoughts and uh, teachings that the Greek church considered her heretical. Uh, but in the Armenian church, um, he stayed as a saint. We never anathematized him. Uh, he was only anathematized for his original or originistic views because he was following the origin of Alexandria, uh, who had some heretical uh, views uh, and teachings. But it's interesting when you read Evagrius in the Armenian uh, version, in its Armenian translation, you don't see those heretical uh, teachings at all. Uh, he's very orthodox, <laughs> in fact. Uh, so, but that's correct, yes, because uh, of those views uh, expressed in some of his works, uh, he was anathematized by the Byzantine church. So. so is it possible that his hered heretical views were deliberately taken out of the Armenian translations because of- Very possible, yes. Actually, we have some of our church fathers who wrote com commentaries on Evagrius, on Evagrius's work, for example, uh, Mateus Juvayetzi uh, from 13th century or, or uh, Giragos Yerzengatsi. Uh, and when you read uh, their interpretation um, or their commentary, uh, they, you know, it, it's, it, it's interesting, you know, they, they take whatever Evagrius says and they interpret it in the orthodox way. Uh, so they don't go into the direction that one uh, might when if, if they want to criticize Evagrius, they might take it and take it farther and you know now renounce him as, as, as an heretic. Uh, but they take that and they try to find a solution and explanation that makes Evagrius even more orthodox. So uh, it's it's very uh, interesting, especially in his Kafalaya Gnostica, one of the largest works of Evagrius, uh, which basically we have his theology in Kafala Agnostica and Kiragos Erzengatsi, uh, an Armenian church father from uh, the 13th century, wrote a, a, a commentary on that. Uh, he, he gives a wonderful explanation of the things that, uh, for example, in the Greek church, uh, they, 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 they find him uh, heretical, but Kiragos looks at it uh, from different point of view, from different perspective. Uh, so, I have a question there, Hayes. Sure. Um, so the sort of prayer that uh, he talks about here, uh, the language he uses is almost like conversational. It's um, it's almost like meditative, keeping your focus um, steady. Mm -hmm. And I guess the more typical like prayer we're raised with uh, in the Armenian tradition is like a memorized or written prayer. Um, is, is there a difference there or do they also have, um, were they, repeating memorized prayers, or is this something different that monks did? And is there a dis distinction between the lay people and the monks, how they would pray? Yes, uh, well, it's interesting because during Evagris' time, there was no set uh, order of prayers. Like for example, we say that in, in the Armenian church, we have nine different hours, yes. We have like morning hour, night hour, 
and then three midday hours, and then evening hour, uh, and then sunrise uh, and peace hour. So if you count uh, all together, it's nine. Uh, but in the ancient church, they did not have that. And uh, just we have to keep in mind that Evagrius is a monk. So he's not, although it's a semi anchoretic life, uh, so he would, he would go to his cell in the monastery during the week. Uh, this is what we learned from the life of Evagrius. That, and then uh, during uh, in Saturday and Sunday, they would go to church and, collect and, and, and come together with other brothers, uh, monk brothers, and they would pray together. Uh, but it's more spontaneous. Um, you know, they would rise up in the middle of the night and whatever Holy Spirit would dictate them, how, however they would, it would move their spirits, uh, they would just pray that way. Uh, so uh, to answer your question, it was kind of the formation of the formal way of uh, prayer, said prayer the, the way that we know now. Uh, so today, if you go to the monasteries, it's different. So we have like set hours, and everything is written, our sharagans, even in Jerusalem, you know, where they keep all the uh, canonical hours, uh, uh, they, they have everything set. But during Evagris's time, it wasn't uh, that much organized. So the monk would pray on his own uh, and then uh, they would recite Psalms also together uh, and then sing. Uh, so, but it, it was kind of in the beginning point where everything was uh, getting more organized and more formalized. Uh, I'm sure, uh, uh, you know, in, in, the, the, there are some more studies done about that uh, as when the formal liturgy came about. So Denhai, was this written for monks? In other words, did he see his audience as other monks, or was this the kind of thing he would have been intending regular people to uh, read? I think primarily it was written for the monks, because in the prologue, as I was mentioning, there is a request. Uh, someone is requesting him to write uh, something about prayer, you know, to write how, how should one pray. Uh, and most apparently, the person who is requesting is a monk. Uh, we can basically feel it from the, the way that he is asking the question or requesting uh, or putting his words, uh, that he is someone who was very acquainted with uh, the desert monasticism um, in Egypt, and he was probably monk himself. So, so uh, I think Evagrius was writing to the monks, but it does not mean that regular people cannot use the advice that Evagrius gives. You know, I think it's a, it's a great piece of um, uh, literature or, or, or a, a teaching that each of us can take and we can also learn from it and apply it to our own prayer life and learn from it. So uh, it's, it's not that long. It has 153 verses, and I think we already translated first 60. Uh, so hopefully one day it will be published and available uh, to everyone. Well, so on so. that note, we are getting past the time now. Um, I'll ask you, Terhai, is, is there, um, as we close, is there um, something to pray, uh, something you would prescribe us to meditate on or pray on on our uh, own time after this, as we leave, um, to sort of apply some of what you, what, what you've taught. Um, I, yeah, I would I would use uh, the technique that Evagrius uses uh, of the spontaneous prayer. You know, uh, and uh, it's it's already eight o'clock. I know most of us probably have to go to bed soon. Mm -hmm. So when you go to bed, just close your eyes and just uh, just let the Holy Spirit move your heart. You know, just as Evagius says, you know, make your mind deaf and, uh, and, and, and mute and, and kind of concentrate on him. Think about God as you, you are lying down uh, and, and let God speak to you and, and move your spirit, your soul 
and see what what happens. Maybe you you hear something or you you feel something in your heart that you never heard or felt before. Uh, and may God bless all of you. And uh, during these you know difficult times, uncertain times for all of us, uh, I pray for each of you and everyone, uh, so that may God give us His hope, His guidance, uh, and His certainty. So. We'll finish with the prayer. Ahaban, Amen, Ani Christos, Achkovan, Litsi Veramer, Itvei Gisheri, Inastilitan, Ignali Janapar, Inangel, Eviharnel, Zimir Pek Sasanet Sites, Yevo Hurmia, Koaradzot, Yevmez, Pazma Melatses, Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Yeah. Thank you, Terai. And thank you, everyone. Right, God bless for coming. Um, two more sessions. I'd love to to see everyone again. Um, and then there's uh, two more, I think one more of the general module sessions and one more of the um, sacred music. So thank you all for coming again. Thank you, Terhaj. And uh, thank you. You have a good night. Bye-bye. Thank you.